All right, in this particular video, we're going to be talking about a hard topic, or at least students find it quite difficult, at the end of section 3.2, which is called Chebyshev's Theorem. What this theorem gives you is a worst case scenario as to what proportion of the data has to live in a particular range. So let's see if I can make that make a little more sense. Supposing my data has a mean of 20, it's already been calculated, and the standard deviation is 5. So what I could do is I could go to my number line. I could form an interval where the center of the interval is 20. So what I do is I go from 20, I go up by 5 and down by 5. And so that range of 15 to 25 is what we call one standard deviation around the mean. I could do the same thing but go two standard deviations. So if the standard deviation is 5, then 2 times that is 10. So again, I'm starting at the 20, and I'm going up by 10 and down by 10. That gives me a wider interval, namely from 10 to 30. That is two standard deviations around the mean. I could do the same procedure by going three standard deviations around the mean of 20. So three times 5 is 15, and so it would be even wider. And so, again, what Chebyshev's theorem says is, if you go k standard deviations around the mean, where k is just some number, could be a fraction, could be a whole number, the only restriction is k has got to be bigger than 1 then the theory predicts the proportion of your data that have to live in that interval. And that proportion is 1 minus 1 over your k number squared. And so there is the particular interval. So let's look at an example. So let's take two standard deviations. So if I go two standard deviations, that's 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. But 1 over 2 squared is a fourth, and 1 minus a fourth is 3 fourths. 3 fourths is 0.75, or 75%. So Chebyshev's theorem says, if I go within two standard deviations of a particular set of data. 75% of all the numbers should live in that interval. You can see the calculation there for three standard deviations. That would be 1 minus 1 ninth. 1 minus a ninth is 8 ninths, or 88% of the data should live within there. Another example. All right, so supposing I've got 200 pieces of data, 200 numbers uh, somewhere, and it's already been calculated that the mean of the data is 50, and it has a standard deviation of 5. So if I do this for my k intervals, it would be centered at 50, so I have 50 plus 5k and 50 minus 5k. So supposing the book asks us, well, what proportion of values will fall in the interval of 30 to 70? All right, well, let's see. I match that up with the general k interval. So 30 to 70 matches up with that. And so let's see. 50 minus 5k matches up with 30. 
And so if I go and solve for k, I get k is 4. So if k is 4, I plug that into my formula, which predicts the proportion of data that would live there. So it's 1 minus 1 over 4 squared. So 1 minus 1 16th, which would give me 15 sixteenths. And so that says that essentially 93.7% of my 200 uh, numbers should live in there. So if I actually wanted to find out, well, how many, how many numbers would that be? Then I would take 0.937, multiply that by 200. So essentially 187 of the 200 numbers should live in that interval between 30 and 70. All right, let's take another example. Now, this is from our textbooks. So, America spend an average of three hours per day online. Okay, that's the mean. If the standard deviation is 32, all right, that's S. S is 32. They want to uh, find the range in which at least essentially 89% of the data would fall. Okay, well, let's see. Uh, let's see what's living there. Three hours a day online. We have some mixing and matching of time because three hours and I've got here 32 minutes. So I make everything in terms of minutes. So three hours is three times 60 or 180 minutes. So first off, I got to figure out, well, what K would give me this 0.8889. So I have to solve this for K. So with a little manipulation, you end up and you get that K is three. All right, so if k is 3, that means I'm going three standard deviations around the mean. Well, remember, we converted the hours to minutes. So that's going to be 180 plus three standard deviations, so 3 times 32. And so I get an interval that goes between 84 and 276 minutes. And the conclusion is about 89% of all of my data would live somewhere in that particular interval. Chebyshev's theorem is a confusing theorem. But just keep reminding yourself, it's only predicting. If that's its only role. It's predicting what proportion of your data has to live in a particular interval on the number line. That interval is going to be centered at the mean, whether you go mean plus k standard deviations or mean minus k standard deviations. And for a given k, this particular 1 minus 1 over k squared will give you the proportion that you're after.